All right, good evening. I'm going to give a little preview tonight on a new feature of Mass Transit, a tra feature that I'm uh, pretty excited about. It's been in the works for about three weeks now, and we finally have some pretty good support in there. Um, just want to acknowledge Dennis, who's probably done 99% of the work on this. Um, so, um, yeah, so I want to kind of get into it. It isn't documented yet. You know that I'll eventually get to that. Uh, this is a feature slated for the version 7 release of Mass Transit. So that's that should be GA before the first week of July. At least that's the current target. Uh, it's, I think, basically feature complete. The only thing left is some Cosmos DB work for some updates there. Uh, but other than that, everything's been done. There are preview packages available on NuGet. Uh, so if you want to download it and check it out, um, there, you know, a lot of the stuff was documented in the issue of what was going to be changed, but I haven't updated the upgrade notes yet. But once I have that merged into develop, those upgrade notes will reflect kind of the changes that are coming in. So um, with that, I wanted to jump in. Um, so Mass Transit has, you know, we, you know, about, I guess it was about a year and a half ago, I started looking at how we could bring event streaming into Mass Transit. And we were looking at, you know, Event Hub, we were looking at Kafka, we were trying to figure out how we could make those sources of events a better part of mass transit. And we put some initial support in for Azure Functions because Azure Function had an Event Hub dispatcher and, and it just, it, it fit, it worked. Um, and it was kind of a crutch to get by because I think what we realized is that the semantics and the expected behaviors of something like Event Hub or Kafka are very different than what you get with RabbitMQ or ActiveMQ or Azure Service Bus or even Amazon SQS. Uh, the guarantees are different, the behavior is different, the scale is different. It, it's really a different kind of thing. And what we found is that there are two different use cases when you want to bring events like Kafka or Event Hub into you know, a system. You're typically doing it to process a lot of events and update some sort of data. And, you know, if you're doing event streaming, you're, you're updating some sort of aggregates based on those events, or you're tracking that behavior. Um, and, you know, that's one part of it, but without being able to produce events back into another system, you're really kind of limited on what you can do. I mean, Event Hub and Kafka, they, you know, they call Kafka a broker, but it isn't. It's a bunch of log files that you can read from, and Kafka coordinates that reading. Um, you know, all the offsets are stored. You have consumer groups. It's really meant for that kind of data distribution uh, approach. You wouldn't do request response through Kafka. Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have those type of RPC level conversations that you might do with RabbitMQ. Um, and so when we looked at that, we thought, okay, how can we present this into mass transit? as a first class citizen that takes advantage of everything that's built into the bus and, and make it easy to use and have the same kind of semantics, but without creating a bunch of not implemented exceptions if you try to do things that don't exist. So the concept that we've come up to and we're introducing in version seven is the concept of riders. You know, buses can have riders and so things that ride on the bus they take an existing bus and they plug into that bus. So let me just kind of show how this looks in the configuration syntax, and then we'll go into some of the details. So what I have on the screen now is I have the program CS of a sample that I built tonight, uh, and it's called Ride On. And I built this about an hour ago, um, and I thought, why not just kind of cover it real quick, uh, just to get the information out there and get some feedback on it. Um, so I have some setup here. I'm setting up serial log. I'm adding it to the container. The support for writers is currently limited to MSDI. Um, I think we're going to probably support Autofac with them as well, but there won't be broad container support uh, because everything kind of runs in MSDI. And it, you know, if you look at the download numbers, it's killing everybody else, at least in terms of usage. So. Um, that isn't to say we couldn't bring it onto any containers. Writers don't require a container. It's just the configuration is a whole lot easier when we have the container. Um, so we're using the mass transit configuration syntax here, and I'll kind of start with that. 
Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the add mass transit and we're going to add a consumer, which is our patron visited. So let me discuss the domain that I wanted to model here for this sample. And I tried to keep it as simple as possible. It's a single program CS with about half a dozen other CS files. Um, I want to keep track of patrons coming into the building. Patrons have, let's just say a beacon on them, like a Bluetooth ID or something. And when they walk into the store, I want to know when they've entered and I want to know when they left. And those two events get written to two different topics. Tonight, I'm going to use Kafka for this example because it can run it entirely local in Docker. Um, and when I have a patron who has visited the store, I want to take and then publish an event back to my RabbitMQ system so that my other components, and I just have a simple consumer for now, are able to observe that completed composite event of a patron entering and leaving. Um, and the, you know, I handle some pretty interesting things around here as it doesn't matter what order the events appear as far as arriving or leaving, they can come and go as they please. The, the, I'm using a state machine against the event streams. So the state machine is able to track that data and then produce those events. And it's, 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 it's a pretty simple domain, but it's something that I think, you know, is a, is an example of something you might do with an event stream. If you were tracking device data or just application exhaust data that you wanted to calculate metrics on or anything like that. So I have a patron visit a consumer. All it does is it respond, it handles one message type called patron visited. All this has in it is the patron ID when they entered, when they left. Super simple, nothing really complicated there. I tried to keep this as simple as possible. And I will put this up on GitHub for you to check out, uh, including the Docker Compose and everything. Um, you can see a new syntax piece of sugar here. I don't know what else to call it. Um, using RabbitMQ. So previously, you would create an, you would use a, within the AdMass Transit, you would say x dot add bus. Um, we've streamlined that a bit to where each transport has its own opening predicate. In this case, using RabbitMQ is what I'm using. So that's the one that we have in place here. And I'm just using the default configuration at this point, calling configure endpoints and calling it done. Um, the, the next uh, statement is the add rider. And I can add as many riders as I want. There is no limit. The riders are attached to the bus that's within this add mass transit expression. Um, and riders also support multibus. So if you're using multibus with MSDI and have like a RabbitMQ and an Amazon SQS bus, totally cool. You can put riders on either bus and they will stay attached to that bus and everything will be accessible through the container. So the only, the interesting thing about riders, and I'll go into that, you know, when we kind of discuss it a little bit and show how this is modeled, is they are actually part of the bus. They are creating virtual receive endpoints within the bus that are not part of the transport. So even though I have a RabbitMQ bus, I'm able to graft Kafka riders or onboard Kafka riders onto the bus so that I can deliver messages to that bus except using Kafka's client. Um, so let's kind of go into that. I've created a state machine for my rider. And you'll notice when I add rider, I have another configuration expression here and I can configure data you know, I can configure new types within the writer, just specific to the writer. I'm also able to access stuff from the outer scope as well. And that's something we may or may not make an option, or I might be wrong and it actually doesn't do that. But either way, it's, it's, it allows you that flexibility to say what's within the writer. Um, I'm adding a Saga state machine. In this case, I have my patron state machine. I'll go into that shortly. Um, and I'm adding two producers. So with riders for both event hub and kafka you can pr you can produce um events which are then going out to topics and topics is a loose word and let's just call them files in kafka because that's really what they are but whatever they're partition files um but we've we've tried to stick to that syntax of topics and producers and the reason we're using producer instead of like a send endpoint or publish is because the semantics are different we are when we're producing, we're producing a message that gets delivered to a specific topic on the broker. Uh, I'm just using name of at this point to name the topic. You could use whatever you wanted to name them. Um, so I've, I'm adding two producers. And what this add producer does is it actually configures the container so that I can resolve an iKafka producer. 
I don't have to do this, but if I want to use it from the container, that's the syntax that we have for that. Um, producers are entirely optional, but if you want to resolve them from the container, they have to be registered this way. Um, now, just like we have with using RabbitMQ up here, I've added a writer and I'm going to say using Kafka. This is where I start to configure Kafka, and this is going to be very similar to the bus configuration. I'm going to tell it my host. In this case, it's localhost 9092. And I'm going to configure my topic endpoints. Now, what this does is it configures a Kafka consumer, and we're using the Confluent Kafka client um, for .NET, which I believe under the hood uses RD Kafka or whatever it is. Um, but we're going to create a topic endpoint. We're using null for the key because honestly, what does the key really buy you? I don't know. You can specify any type you want. I'm just using null because why not, right? Um, and the message type that's actually in the topic, the value, the key value, the way Kafka's client works, is we're specifying the interface message type. We're using the name of patron entered. Uh, our consumer group name, we're just using ride on, which is the program that I'm in. So might as well just use that name. Um, I don't know why I'm setting auto offset reset earliest, but why not? Doesn't seem to bother me. Um, and I'm configuring that saga. And you'll see here, I'm actually configuring the saga on two separate topic endpoints. And the reason is because those different events are being passed through different topics in Kafka. So there's that. Um, I also have to register my topic producers because, again, Kafka's client, you have to specify the serializer, deserializer for each client topic. So I'm using null here again, and I'm using patron entered, pentered left. I'm putting the name of it in here, and I could configure the topic. I'm just, I'm, there's nothing I want to configure. I'm just using the defaults here. And that's about it. Um, that configures the writer. My RabbitMQ endpoint is configured with my patron visited consumer. Um, and my Saga state machine, I'm just using the in-memory Saga repository because all I'm doing is reading this event stream and doing some work against it. So I don't need to do anything really crazy. In fact, I don't even care about the state because I'm not trying to keep track of patrons. I'm just trying to correlate two events from two separate topics to produce an event back to RabbitMQ. Okay, so that's Kafka. Event Hub is very similar. Event Hub has uh, event hubs. Uh, and you can have producers as well. It's a very similar syntax. The, you don't have to have as much specificity with Event Hub because Event Hub doesn't require you to special specify the key value cert as. So you're able to actually just create Event Hubs and you can publish any types to them you want. It's a lot similar to a send endpoint as far as the types that you can pass to it. Uh, and you can also do batch sends with Event Hub as well, where you can just send it in I enumerable, and we'll break that up into the appropriate batch sizes to send them very quickly to Event Hub. Um, yeah, so that's the configuration for Kafka. It's creating and it's doing a bunch of configuration under the hood for how the container works and how it resolves these things. Um, but it's pretty slick the way it works, and it handles, it supports health checks, so we know if Kafka's healthy. I mean, all of the stuff that we get out of the box with you know bus health and metrics and things like that are all going to be captured in here all the activity metrics prometheus metrics all of that stuff is available so super slick totally soaked about it um, the next piece we're going to have in here is um, so since i've configured the container now i'm going to build a service provider validate everything is good get myself a logger i'm going to get the bus from the container and i'm going to start the bus with a timeout I'm going to say that it started, and then I've built the client into the same app so that I don't have to just cut and paste the configuration between two apps. And so I'm going to await for this client to run, and then I'm going to stop the bus. Uh, and what this does is it gives me a console to just enter the number of patron visits to generate, and it's going to go out and just spew a bunch of data into Kafka, and we'll get to see that processed by the state machine. Um, so let me bring up that state machine because I wanted to kind of show what we're doing there. Because uh, once I start running this, it's you know pretty interesting. Um, so the state machine has two different events that it looks for. It looks for the patron entered and the patron left event. And what the patron entered, entered and patron left events, those are going to be processed by those two different topic endpoints within uh, Kafka. I'm also keeping track. I have a state called tracking, which I just go into when I'm tracking a patron. And... I correlate those events by the patron ID. 
either of those events can start the state machine. And when I do receive either of those events, I initialize either the entered or the left properties on the state. So the only state I'm capturing in memory is I'm capturing the correlation ID, which is what gets mapped from the patron ID. I have the current state, which is just an int for tracking. I have a visited status, which I'll go into in a second. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep track of our multiple events to do basically the join that we're using this saga to do. And then it has two properties, one for entered and one for left. And I didn't make them nullable because I'm not going to write this to a database. I'm just doing it in memory. But if you were using a database, you would probably want to make these nullable so that they wouldn't you know, write weird ass invalid dates to the database. Um, so yeah, so I have the timestamps. I have the tracking state. One thing that I probably haven't done in any of the videos is used a composite state or a composite event. What composite events do in Automatonomous is I'm able to special specify a, a plain event, in this case visited, because I'm saying that a patron has visited, and they've only visited when they've both entered and left. If they entered and never leave, well, that's kind of a problem. Um, and if it was really something you really cared about, you could probably do a timeout, but really, if yeah, it could be a glitch, who knows. Um, but I'm going to track when they've entered and they've tracked when they've left. So when I define a composite event, I specify the event name. I use that visited status, which is a, it uses a bit flag on that integer to keep track of all of the events that have happened. And because I'm specifying events in my list that are part of the initially definition, meaning that they can start the state machine, I need to tell it that I want to include the composite event in initial. If the events that were on this list were not able to start a new state machine instance, you would not need this option. But without this, it won't actually track that first event. And yeah, you can imagine it took me probably 10 minutes to remember that and pulling my hair out trying to figure out why my state machine wasn't working, only to remember that I have to tell it to put the event handlers into the initial state. So yeah, save you some time there. Uh, and I'm saying that one, you know, entered and left both have to be triggered before I'm able to do this. The reason composite event is defined down here and not up here is because if I define this up here and try to be cute and put all my event declarations together, this actually adds event handlers to those states and it would make it so this composite event would fire before these methods had run. So basically I wouldn't have captured the entered or left time when I executed the visited event. So everything is in order and so it has to be defined down here. And then I specify the handler for the composite event which just says hey this person visited and I'm calling publish async. And because I'm using publish again, publish, this is a writer, this is going to be running on topic endpoints from Kafka that's a writer of the RabbitMQ bus. So publish is going to publish on RabbitMQ. If I wanted to produce an event back to Kafka, I would actually create a state machine activity that would take a dependency on iProducer and produce that event back. And if I feel like going into it after I finish kind of going through the demo, we can do that live because, you know, why not? It sounds like a fun project and you know, it probably wouldn't work and it'll pull my hair out again, but at least it would be fun and we would have a good time. So. so with that in mind, all I'm doing is I'm publishing that event. I'm telling it the correlation ID instance, etc., And I'm saying set completed when finalized because I don't want these state machine instances to build up. I'm just going to throw them away once they've entered and left. So back to program CS, let's go out to the console. Um, you can see from a Docker PS here, I've started up Kafka, which takes a truckload of images, but between Kafka, the schema registry, Zookeeper, all that fun stuff, good times, uh, all of that is up and running. I'll, I'll have the Docker compose in the sample, but I think it's, uh, what is it, Docker compose? Uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? Docker Compose. Yeah, so you can see the Docker Compose has, you know, the different packages in there. I added RabbitMQ on the end. Very simple. Um, that's Bat, by the way. It's a Rust app that's an alternative to Cat that actually does pretty printing. Thank you, Drew Sellers, for that. 
bat is legit. I don't use cat anymore, except, you know, when I want to hit the cat with a bat. I would never do that, never do that. Uh, so let's run, the, uh, let's run the app. We got .NET run. What are we going to see here? We're going to see it run. Let me see if I can crank up some fontage a little here. Uh, so .NET run, it's loading up. It looks like partitions are assigned and closed, assigned and closed. I'm configuring my endpoints. Uh, I got my Saga, I got my Saga state machine. Starting the host, you can see where I'm connecting to RabbitMQ. Declaring some exchanges and queues. Now I have my writer starting, confluent.kafka. It's started, you can see the partitions are there. Let's go ahead and send myself a patron. Well, that was quick. Um, what I did is I sent two messages, one to each of the uh, um, topics. You will see, and I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with this yet. I mean, like I said, these are kind of virtual endpoints. Right now, it's actually creating a, a kind of a, a virtual path here of the name of the writer, in this case, Kafka, slash uh, patron left or patron enter. And, you know, that, that at least lets you know that it's a Kafka topic and it has the name. I'm not sure how we want to do that yet. Um, it, it makes sense because, like I said, the writer is on the bus. So, I don't know. I, it, it feels weird to me, but I'm just going to go with it because I think it's okay. But... Yeah, we need to figure out how we want to name that because it has actually hosted. It is a virtual endpoint in RabbitMQ. It's just the messages are coming from Kafka instead of um, RabbitMQ transport. And any messages I publish, they're going to expect to be within that host. So it's kind of one of those things that I like. I got to wrap my brain around and see if it makes the most sense. But so far, it seems to be working. Um, but you can see I'm able to run a Saga against this. So if you were doing like, I mean, if you considered like a Saga state machine, your aggregate root, you could plug this on to a bunch of topics in Kafka and do like full on event sourcing in Kafka with a state machine where your state would constantly be updated based on events from Kafka. So it's pretty legit, I think. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and it has potential to be super, super fast as well. Um, so you can see that I get to, I send the two messages those messages get received. I create a new Saga. I'm adding a new Saga instance for that one loop. And I can see that the message gets written out that the patron visited, how long they stayed for. In this case, it's randomly generated. So it just says they stayed for 50 minutes. They, they got in at 18 minutes after and they left at 17 minutes after the next hour. Cool enough. We did the receive. And that, that receive was actually on RabbitMQ, localhost patron visited, which is where my patron visited consumer endpoint is. Um, and you can see the numbers on this, it's pretty quick. Uh, if I come in here and say, let's just do 100, I mean, it's it's like done. So, I mean, it's, I don't know how fast, it, I mean, if I didn't have logging on, it would probably run a lot faster, but you know, it's, you know, what it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, performance isn't gonna be an issue. The logging was taking significantly longer than it actually runs. I think the first test that we did with a consumer group with like four partitions, we were getting somewhere around 58,000 messages a second. Of course, message consumers weren't doing a whole lot, but the, the throughput is there, and that was on a pretty modest, I think that benchmark was on a 13-inch MacBook Pro. So I think that's what he has. So um, yeah, there's, there's a potential to have some pretty serious uh, performance coming through this. So uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't do anything weird, like resend it through RabbitMQ. It's going straight from the Confluent Kafka client into the actual Saga code. So it's, it's a little like the Mediator. You know, Mediator was kind of the first approach I did for Kafka, but you know, once we started thinking about it, it just made sense to totally get the mass transit configuration feel and ease of use down for rocking this thing. Um, so I'm gonna shut it down. Oh, I hit Control C instead of actually exiting, so that's super exciting. It probably didn't save my offset. Oh no, it does because it does the checkpointing. So yeah, it saved the offset. Nope, it didn't save the offset because I killed it. <laughs> Keep me honest, get honest. So if I actually exit, yeah, then it will actually save the checkpoint. So when I come up, the checkpoints are every so often, I think they're on a timer, um, a timer message count, something like that. But uh, again, something that we'll probably tune and tweak as we go. And you can see that it's leaving partitions. Kafka will reassign the client to partitions. And so we handle the partition shifts and the partition changes for you so that the 
you know, messages that are in process that get dropped because of a partition change will get properly canceled and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, so if I do, just do 10 real quick and then I just exit out, you can see that it'll update the offset. The checkpointing offset is 240 on shutdown. It does get updated over time um, as messages are processed. It's just, you know, I think it's like every minute or something. It's an expensive operation, but we can tweak those values. I think they're configurable. Um, there's a there's so many configurations options and we met we map all of them available So when you're configuring the host and stuff, there's there's like 50 Settings that we map through to the confluent client and we do the same thing for event hub as well um, Yeah, so that's Kafka rocking in mass transit. It's gonna be in version 7. It's gonna be in uh, Gonna be in the um, Probably the first week of July, we expect to have this out and generally available. Like I said, I'm using the I'm using the pre-release packages right now. So if you just go out and use the 7.0 develop, I think the latest build of it was today. Uh, these packages are out there and available today. Um, so yeah, I will push this sample up to GitHub, and I will once I upload it to YouTube, I'll include a link. Um, to the uh, project on GitHub so you can pull it down and mess with it. Uh, again, super simple. I think it's gonna be really useful for bridging the gap between the event stream systems, you know, Event Hub and Kafka into a more broker-based approach uh, where you're gonna be dispatching code to other types of consumers and doing event correlations and stuff. So pretty thrilled, pretty excited about the feature. Hopefully this was informative and uh, thanks for joining. And you have any questions be sure to visit the discord uh, the discord link will also be on the video so take care have a good night